What's up guys, Man on the Moon here with another video, and today I'm going to be doing another character build guide, and I'm going to be going over Lori Grimes, um, you know, same as usual, going over the skills, the combat mods, and the weapons that I use on her, or have used on her. Now, we are going to start off with the skills here, and it's important to note that she actually does have upgrades on her rush, which it's kind of important. I mean, that 100% damage per hit, I mean, that's 200% damage off of her rush if you don't have that upgraded, and it's only tier 3, so like, it's not like you have to wait till you get her lb2 lb3 to upgrade that so make sure that's done now moving on to the passives um it's worth noting that i am not done with lori uh i didn't get her till eh, a couple months ago i mean it was fairly recently and it, but i didn't really start using her until maybe the past like month and so I've been, you know, going through, and so I don't have her completely maxed out. Uh, I probably wouldn't finish Guard Break, if I'm being honest. I might go to level 9, just because for that one extra level. But I don't know if that's worth Attack Down Resistance. I don't know if that's worth uh, Madeline and Maddox. Agility, 1 and 2, 100% is. Final Bullet, 1 and 2, are definitely worth it. Although I would say that maybe the level 15 upgrade on Final Bullet, that's probably not worth it. Uh, just... It, whenever, a, whenever a skill only goes to 15, I always just think, feel like it's not worth going past 14. It's not worth a Maddox or a Madeline, whatever it is, for, for one final upgrade. Yeah, it doesn't look as as nice, but I, I'd rather save the trainer, personally. Um, same thing down here with Frightening Violence 2. Uh, the Frightening Violence 1 and the Final Bullet 2 are both 20 upgrade skills apiece, so going completely in on those isn't a bad idea. But going in on the ones that only have 15 upgrades, I just, I would leave it at 14 and call it a day if it's, you know, when it's me. That being said, I obviously did go to 15, but I can't even say why I did that. Um, that was probably back before I was struggling with Madeline and Maddox's because I was pretty flush with them for, like, the first eight months of the mythic era i was just good on madeline and maddox's and then i went on an upgrade spree and i haven't really recovered since all right so moving on to the mods we've got attack set attack on attack obviously uh, attack versus alert attack versus tough crit damage multiplier and stun resist I went with Stun Resist because I actually do use her. She's one of the ones I use against Pam teams. And a lot of times you just get stuck attacking an alert. So Stun Resist seemed like the way to go. The crit damage, multiplier, and, you know, everything being on attack set, it just makes sense. Unfortunately, my attack verse mods on these right here in particular, are just, it's not, they're not great, but... Anything over 40 is, is decent. Anything over 50 is just really good. So, I mean, 41% attack versus alert's a bit rough, but I honestly probably have a gold one that's better. It would just drop the set bonus, so... Plus, I'm not trying to dig through all my mods that... Yeah, no. Um, I went with... Tough and alert instead of alert and strong, mainly because she doesn't need any help with strong tunes. And seems like there's always a Vance or a Davy or now Angel. And it people just don't care about trade you know, like those characters are so are so good that you know, having lead skill doesn't necessarily or the entire lead skill. It just doesn't necessarily matter. 
um, like behind Pam teams, for instance, you know, I'll still see Vance's behind Pam teams all the time. And they just don't care about the whole lead skill, you know? So, that, that that's the reason for the Attack vs. Tough mod. Alright, finally, we got the weapons that I use on her. Now, both of these I actually do use on separate teams. Uh, to pretty good effect. Alright, so first up, we got my weapon that I use on my anti-PM team. It's a Wanderer's Destructive SMG. It's just, you know, built it from scratch. 45% attack, huge bonus to AP when attacking. Bonus attack plus 45% attack when attacking enemies of more than 50% HP and 1535 in the fourth slot. Uh, and it works, you know. Versus PM teams, if there's a if there's a strong character in there, chances are it's dying to her. Because she just, she kills. She just, oh my god, she hits so hard. Um, and it's just, you know, this is... I would say this is an easy weapon to build, but these weapons seem to be the ones that are hardest for me, particularly. I always end up getting, like... I think I got three... When I was crafting this weapon specifically, I think I got three of the minus 50 AP, the trait grit ones... I know when I was doing the plus defense, I got the elusive impair like four, three times. It's just, it's silly. But technically speaking, this is actually the easier weapon to craft. So this is, I always say that having one of these for every trade is, is a good idea. Next up, we got Axel's Murderous Deagle. 50% attack, very large bonus to AP when attacking, confuse on crit, and 1535. This had something else in the fourth slot. I can't remember what it was, honestly, like at all. It might have been the slow attacks or something. I, I don't remember. Uh, I actually got the fifth. I got this one perfect very quickly, like my first or second try. So I, I legitimately don't remember. Uh, I use this weapon more on my control -y team with her uh, you still get good damage you don't have the bonus attack but the percentage is higher so your her attack her base attack stat is higher with this weapon and it's just this weapon is just I love it personally confused on the I mean it's only one turn but the fact that you can influence it happening versus the better chance ones where it's just it procs or it doesn't. I can influence how much my character crits by having 1535s on them or with my mods or you know, whatever the case may be. And honestly, I'll go as far as to recommend that anybody that has this weapon should swap the 1535 on it. Because it really does make a very big difference. Alright guys. Well, that was my Lori Grimes character build guide. I hope it helped you guys. I know she's a, you know, with her being the first Mythic care, uh, mythic Trial tune, she's, she's fairly old. But one thing about these Mythic Trial tunes is they're built better than your average character. Even your average promo, the, you know, they are really built to last. And, I mean, the proof is, is there in the fact that I've only recently started using her. And she is still doing mass amounts of damage. The defense down she gives on her passive is just insanely good. And she's done... And at this point, the more, most important part is most people should probably have... All five of the Atlanta Allegiance members to LB3 by this point. So you should be able to go out and get Lori, uh, this Lori whenever you want. And I would actually say that getting her is worth the gold medals. Like the gold gear medals that it would require to get her. It, she's worth it. She's really good. Um, but yeah... That's all I got for you guys today. 
Let me know down in the comments below. Do you use Lori? What teams do you use her on? Uh, do you have her? You know, have you are are you sitting on the fence of oh should I upgrade these these characters so I can get her? You know, where are you at with her? Let me know down in the comments below. Remember, like and subscribe. And remember, it's a game, so try and have fun. This is going to be your friendly neighborhood man on the moon, signing off. Later, guys.